Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation, a super exponential equation. We have 15 to the power 3 to the power x plus 10 to the power 3 to the power x equals 6 to the power 3 to the power x. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now at this point, you may want to guess the solution, which is not very easy. So we're going to be using substitution to simplify this a little bit. And then we're going to look at, you know, a couple different things to find the answer. So, first of all, I notice that 3 to the power x repeats. So it would make sense if you could replace it with something. Now, what would happen if you have 3 to the power x here and something else here? Then it would be a different story. You could have 9 to the x and you could still use substitution. But if this was 5 to the power x, then it will be harder. Anyways, let's go ahead and set 3 to the power x equal to t, okay? t is one of my favorite variables and also one of my favorite drinks. Anyways, that's a different story. So now this turns into 15 to the power t plus 10 to the power t equals 6 to the power t. Now, when you look at an equation like this, one of the first things that you should be checking is integer solutions. And it could be positive integers or negative integers or zero. Even zero could work. For example, if you had an equation like this, 15 to the t plus 10 to the t equals 6 to the t plus 19 to the t, then t equals zero would definitely work because 1 plus 1 would equal 1 plus 1. But not only that, t equals 1 would also work because 25 equals 25. It's that simple. But I gave that to you on purpose because, you know, it's fairly easy to solve with those. But this time we don't have 15 plus 10 equals 6, so I mean I mean that's not gonna work. Maybe it's gonna work with 0, it's not gonna work with 0 either because 0 plus uh, 1 plus 1 does not equal 1. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. And we use this strategy a lot with these kinds of equations and I made a bunch of other videos, I don't know, maybe we can even make a playlist of those where the variables in the exponents. So it's kind of like an exponential equation but a special kind anyways so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna pick the largest base and divide everything by that so let's go ahead and divide everything by 15 to the power t obviously we're gonna get a 1 here which is nice and then I'm sorry I, I just <laughs> okay I'm dividing everything by itself which is weird but I don't know why. Okay, let me repeat this. We're dividing everything by 15 to the power t, not by it themselves. So now this gives us a 1 plus 10 over 15 to the power t equals 6 over 15 to the power t. Great. Both of these fractions can be simplified, and that's what is so special about these numbers because uh, they have a common factor. 10 over 15, if you divide by 5, can be written as 2 over 3 to the power t. And 6 over 15 can be written as 2 over 5 after division by 3. So obviously this equation is simpler than the previous one. And now let's take a look. Here's one thing that I want you to take a look at. They're both exponential functions. Uh, one of the things you need to think about, when you, whenever you have an exponential function, like f of x equals b to the power x, or let's stick with t this time, f of t equals b to the power t. So if b is greater than 1, then your function is going to be increasing. If b is between 0 and 1, then your graph will be decreasing. Make sense? Because if you have a fraction raised to a higher power of integers or any other number that is greater than 1, uh, obviously the values are going to get smaller and smaller. Think about 2 thirds as opposed to 2 thirds cubed. You'll know what I mean. So both of these uh, are decreasing functions, right? So decreasing equals decreasing isn't very helpful. If you had decreasing inclu equals increasing, then it would be helpful because they would only intersect at one point. So if you had a scenario like this, we could say, hey, they're going to intersect at a single point. Or if one of them was a horizontal line, then it would again be the same story. But they're not the case. But there's another way we can approach this. We have a 1 plus on the left-hand side. So the left-hand side is actually greater than 1. Would you agree? 2 thirds to the power t for real values of t is going to be greater than 0. It's going to be positive for sure, right? 
So when you add 1 to it, it's definitely going to be the sum is going to be greater than 1. But notice that this side is actually, is it also greater than 1? It's less than 1. Why? Because I have 2 fifths and I'm raising it to powers. But wait a minute. We can actually make it less than 1 or greater than 1, depending on the situation, right? How can I make this number greater than 1? Is that possible? It is. If you flip it, it's going to be greater than 1. In other words, if you use negative exponents, then you can do it. So this kind of gives us an idea, okay, t must be negative. Because if t is positive, then the equality is impossible. So t is negative. We got that. Good. So what, which value, right? I need to use. So one of the things you can do is you can kind of replace t with negative k. I don't know. You can just do it. 1 plus 2 thirds to the power k equals 2 fifths to the power k. Um, and that will be negative k, of course. But negative k, and in this case, since t is negative, k would be positive because it's the opposite. And then, since we have the negative powers, let's go ahead and flip them. 1 plus 3 halves to the k equals 5 halves to the k. Now we're good because if k is positive, you know, then we're going to get uh, numbers that are greater than 1, so it's good. But take a look at this. What is 1 plus 3 halves? Isn't that 5 halves? Exactly. So for this very reason, uh, k equals 1 works. But k equals 1 means t is equal to negative 1 because t is the opposite of k. Now, you didn't have to do this. You could directly say, hey, you know what? If I flip these and add, I'll get the answer. This is just helping you a little bit, a little bit of hand-holding because um, not everybody is familiar with these kinds of things and they might have a hard time. Anyways, you get the idea, hopefully. t is equal to negative 1. So what is t though, right? We're not looking for t. I mean, t is good, but who cares, right? Well, t is equal to 3 to the power x. So let's go ahead and back substitute. We know that 3 to the power x is t, and then t is equal to negative 1. Uh-oh, that's not good because 3 to the power x equals negative 1 means we're not in the real world. Why? 3 to the power any number must be greater than 0. So negative 1 is only possible if you're dealing with complex numbers. That's why this problem is a little interesting. Let's go ahead and solve it in the complex world. So here's what we're going to do for 3 to the power x. We're going to write it as e to the power ln 3 and then to the power x. And the negative 1, we're going to write it as, I don't think I need a circle. I'm just going to do the coordinate system for real and imaginary parts. This is as negative 1 comma 0 i. So the angle is pi. Polar form or Euler form, you can write it as e to the power pi plus 2 and pi. Don't forget to add the multiples of pi to get all the branches. Otherwise, you're just going to be dealing with the principal branch. Make sense? You can replace n with any integer values. n is an integer, positive or negative. And let's go ahead and do this. e to the power x ln 3 equals e to the power. Can I write it as 2n plus 1 pi i? And now we have the equality x ln 3 equals 2n plus 1 pi i. And now, since we're looking for x values, we can just go ahead and divide both sides by ln 3, which is a positive quantity, right? So we have a pure imaginary number, purely imaginary number, whose real part is 0. And so these x values are actually going to be solutions. And we were looking for x values, so we are done. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.